The decade of the 80s has been perhaps the marquee decade for Colonel football. In a span of 10 seasons, the decade produced a national championship squad, two national runner-up teams, and seven Ohio Valley Conference championship units. In 1980, after going 9-2 in the regular season, Eastern was invited to participate in the four-team 1AA playoffs for the second straight year. To advance to a second consecutive national championship game, Eastern had to go to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for a matchup with the number one Lehigh Engineers, who just a year earlier, the Colonels had walloped 37 to win the 1AA crown. In a tight contest, Colonel tailback Anthony Braxton's 40-yard TD run down the sideline gave EKU the boost it needed in a 23-20 upset victory. This set up a second straight national championship game, this time in Sacramento, California, in the Camellia Bowl against Boise State. A long touchdown pass from quarterback Chris Isaac to split in David Booz gave Eastern a 29-24 lead with just 55 seconds standing between the Colonels and a second consecutive national title. Boise State, however, had other ideas and scored the game-winning touchdown with 12 seconds left in the game to defeat the Colonels 31-29. The following year, in 1981, EKU went 10-1 through regular season play, with the only blemish coming at the hands of NCAA Division I-A Navy. Eastern went undefeated in OVC play and hosted Tubby Raymond's Delaware Blue Hens at Hangar Field in the first round of the three-round playoff. Colonel quarterback Chris Isaac found flanker Renard McFall on a 32-yard scoring pass midway through the final quarter to highlight the 35-28 Eastern victory. In the semifinals on a snowy, windswept afternoon before 22,000 rabid Boise State fans, Colonel place kicker Jamie Lovett booted three barefoot field goals to spur Eastern on to a 23-17 win over the Broncos. For the third straight year, Eastern found itself in the national championship game, this time in Wichita Falls, Texas, in a Pioneer Bowl appearance against Idaho State. Bingo quarterback Mike McCherick's accurate touch was too much for the Colonel defense, leading Idaho State to the national championship with a 34-23 defeat of the Colonels. The string of four straight national championship game appearances continued in 1982 during the most magical of seasons, which culminated in an undefeated 13-0 record, a number one national ranking, and the school's second national football crown. As Eastern stood 6-0 on the year, that brought us to the game a contest that is still talked about and etched in the memory banks of all die-hard Colonel fans. Murray State was the opponent and a national TV audience watched as Eastern hosted the Racers in the first night game ever played at Roy Kidd Stadium. To win this game and keep its record unblemished for the year, EKU had to mount a 16-play, 73-yard drive that featured an unheard of three fourth-down conversions, including one fourth-down run by fullback Nicky Yeast that netted eight inches on a fourth-and-six-inch situation. In a highlight reel-type game, it was once again the combination of quarterback Tuck Woolham and wideout Steve Bird that led to the Colonel victory. This time, this duo hooked up on a six-yard post pattern with 14 seconds left that enabled Eastern to notch another one in the W column. But the fans, the students, ran out on the field. And time they got them off, you know, we kicked the extra point. We make it and go ahead. We get, they run out on the field again. We get, we had 30-yard penalty. We had to kick off on our 10-yard line. So chances are they're going to get the ball to midfield. And they all got to do is hit one pass, and there's 20 seconds to go, and they're going to win the game. And uh, fortunately, that didn't happen. I think we intercepted the ball uh, in the end zone and, and, and won the game. But that was a great game. It was the first game under lights 
it was an exciting game. Uh, I don't know if it's any more exciting than that was in that particular drive that Tuck made. Eastern entered the playoffs with a 10-0 record and a second straight conference title. Eastern advanced to 12-0 in the finals after defeating Idaho 38-30 and Tennessee State 13-7 in the first two rounds. With the playoff wins over Idaho and TSU, the Delaware Blue Hens were all that stood between EKU and a second national title. In the title game, cornerback Gus Parks blocked his sixth kick of the season. This time, it was a Delaware field goal attempt, which was scooped up by defensive end Richard Bell, who romped 77 yards for a touchdown as EKU ran out to a 17-0 lead over the Blue Hens. Although Delaware came up with 14 fourth quarter points, the Colonel defense led by tackle Randy Taylor, linebackers Alex Dominguez and David Hill, nose guard Mike McShane, and defensive backs Anthony Jones and Gus Parks held firm in the last few possessions and Eastern had its second national football crown. That 82 team, they beat everybody. They were, they were just, they were unreal. They, everything that, that could happen to a football team happened to the 82 team and they just overcome all the odds. They overcame everything. OVC championships followed in 1983 and 1984, along with two more playoff appearances. The last four seasons of the decade saw Eastern win three OVC titles and make it to the 1AA playoffs each year, advancing to the semifinal round in 86 and 88.